In this video, you're gonna learn how you can register button clicks with the help of Google Tag Manager and forward on an event to Google Analytics. Hi there, and welcome to another video of gtmtraining.com with me, Julian. And today we wanna to talk about button click tracking with the help of Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics. But before we get started, as always, these little videos are brought to you by gtmtraining.com. And if you like today's lesson and you want to dive in deeper into event tracking, then I encourage you to check out our just relaunched course on Google Tag Manager event tracking, where you'll learn how to track slider interactions, link clicks, form submits, and many more other interactions that can be taken on your website all presented in 24 different video lessons, which have over three hours of content. So if you wanna check that out, head over to gtmtraining.com slash event tracking. And, and I'll also give you a little bit of a discount if you buy this course via this link. So check it out at gtmtraining.com slash event tracking. Now let's get started with button click tracking with Google Tag Manager. Now button click tracking is really a little bit of theory up front. Button click tracking is event tracking with the help of Google Tag Manager. And what Google Tag Manager does is deploy a trigger which listens to the different interactions that we have on our page, filters down on the ones that we want to be sending an event in, and then releasing an event tag to Google Analytics, which we then can see in our event reports. Just to make this a little bit more visual, Let's say you have a website and on that website, Google Tag Manager is deployed. What we'll do is deploy a trigger, which will listen to the different interactions on our page. And this listener will pick up different variables, which we will filter down on and our filter will turn either false or true and then signalize to Google Tag Manager that we can release our event tag to Google Analytics. Now to make this all happen, we will follow four different steps. First of all, we will build a generic click trigger. Then we will trigger our event, see how our variables get filled, and then refine our trigger, make it into a specific one that only fires on our buttons. And once we have the trigger ready, we can then connect it to our event tag. So let's get started. So here we are back at our demo shop and what we want to accomplish today is track when somebody clicks on this add to cart button on our page. Let's go through our steps. First of all, we will build a generic click trigger. We'll go over to Google Tag Manager, click on triggers, click on new, and then we'll build our generic click trigger. As the event, we'll choose obviously the click. And then as the target, we can filter down if we want to clicks on all elements or just links. Now it really depends how the HTML markup is of your button, but since we want to cover all our bases here and make this tutorial as generic as possible, we'll go with the all elements option. Click on continue and then we get to our filter options where we can define if our trigger turns true on all clicks or just some clicks. Now we don't know yet what we will fill in here. So we'll go with all clicks since it's a generic click trigger and create our trigger. Now one thing that we wanna make sure is in our variables menu that we have our click variables enabled here. You only have to do this once. So make sure you have done this and then we can go ahead and go into our preview and debug mode, which we can enable by clicking on the publish button, the little arrow beside that, and here is the preview and debug mode, which we can enable. So we'll put our browser in a special state, and this will only happen for our browser. So once we go back to the page, reload our page, we'll then get our preview and debug console down here. 
and we see which tags are firing and we have different other information available. What we want to do right now is actually trigger our event by clicking on this add to cart button. Since the website will reload upon this button click, I will actually press the command key so it, it opens this action in a new tab. And our preview and debug mode stays open, which is important because we can see on the left side here which events have triggered. And the click that I've done on this add to cart button is number five, GTM click. And upon this link click no tags fired because we haven't connected anything yet, but we can use this to actually look into our variables and see how our click variables were filled. So we have click classes, click element, click ID and so on and so on. And these variables can now be used to filter down on only the elements that we want to fire our tag on. Now as a comparison, I'm gonna click on this view card button here, which just triggered number nine. I just did this again with the command key pressed and we can click on the ninth event here and see how that differs from our number five here. And we see a difference. For example, the click classes is changing because the HTML markup behind this button is different from our add to cart button. So now we can use our click classes to filter down only on these add to cart buttons. So let's go over to Google Tag Manager into our generic click trigger and turn this generic click trigger into a specific one which will only turn true when somebody clicks on the add to cart button. We can leave all our configurations the same, only under the fire on option, we will filter down by clicking on some clicks and then choosing our variable, which we can see in these, this drop down menu. We want to go with our click classes and then we have different matching options and we will go with the contains option and when we go back to our page and see under the click class, it is, needs to have single add to cart button in the click classes. So we can implement this. Into our field. Make sure it matches exactly what you have implemented into your field. This looks good to me. You can now go ahead and save this trigger and connect it to our event tag. You go over to tags and click on new and give it a name. This will be a Google Analytics tag firing an event and it will only fire on our add to cart buttons. Now as a product, we'll choose Google Analytics and the tag type will be Universal Analytics. And then the tracking ID we already saved in a variable called Google Analytics ID. And we can leave all the different configurations. Next, we'll choose track type as event. And then we need to implement the category, the action and the label. Now as a category, I will call this button clicks. The action will be a click. And as a label, I want to fill this dynamically. So I want to know which page did this actually happen on. We have a variable available, which is the page path. You can use that. And then we'll simply click on continue and connect it to our trigger. We go here on more. We have already our add to cart button click trigger prepared here. We'll click save and create this tag. Now let's try this out again. Let's refresh our preview and debug mode. Then go back to our page and also refresh our page. Close the other pages here. And 
click on our Add to Cart button with the command key pressed. And we can see if upon our event, our tag has fired. And I see that when I click on our fifth event here, we have our GA event tag Add to Cart button firing correctly. Now to do a little bit of quality control, you would go over to Google Analytics into your profile and actually look into the real-time reporting under events and see if there was just an event recorded. This seems to work fine. And even if I click and see what the event label was filled with, we can see that the page path was dynamically filled by our variable. Now, to do a negative test, I would also click, for example, on this view card button and see upon the click if my tag has fired and this is not the case, so our trigger works correctly. Now to spin this to the end, you would obviously go over to Google Tag Manager and publish this as a version to all your users. And that's already it with this week's video of gtmtraining.com. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel or give us a thumbs up. And if you want to dive in deeper into different things that you can track on your website with event tracking, then I encourage you to check out our course at gtmtraining.com slash event tracking. I'm Julian. Till next time.